<clears throat> I'm Barry, and this is January 22nd, 4th, 2022, and this is my first vlog from my new man cave. And I was very excited to do the vlog in the man cave, but then I got into the man cave and I realized that I want my thoughts to feel more expansive rather than introspansive, which which is I come to my man cave to be introspansive, but I want to talk to you. And so I'm going to go out to where where I can breathe and the thoughts can breathe. So I'll... This is better. Today I'm going to talk about cognitive dissonance. Now, this is a theory from Western psychology developed by a man named Festinger, Leon Festinger. And usually I would say Western psychology falls short of being able to assess the total human being. But to describe specific behaviors, it can be useful. So Festinger developed this theory after observing what we would call a cult, a religious cult who believed that on a specific date, and this, this was in the 1950s, that there would be a flood and that would be that, and we would all be taken by the flood. And then the date came and there was no flood and Festinger wondered, how will the people in the cult feel about that? And what he discovered is that people on the fringes of the cult, people who were into it, but, you know, they, they, they went on with their lives and they went, well, yeah, I, I got that one wrong. We chalk it up to experience. So. But the people who were really into the cult, who really identified with their worldview, they took the failure as an affirmation. They figured that the flood didn't happen because of the, the faith of the cult members. Huh? Interesting. So the theory he came out of that was that when our behaviors and our feelings don't line up, there's something called cognitive dissonance. And it's uncomfortable. And we work in our psychology to... to make it less uncomfortable. And usually behaviors are in the past, and so we can't change those, so we change our thoughts and our feelings to match the behavior to relieve the dissonance. Now, Festinger doesn't say that this is an effective way to live your life, but he, he, he does theorize that it happens. Now, in the case of the people in the cult, maybe we can say, well, those people were different. We, we can't really identify with them. They don't represent humanity because they were way out there. So Festinger, he, he took this theory into the laboratory in which he would have a test subject go into a room and they would have a task. And the task was to, to turn pegs in a peg board for an hour. And it, it, it was just turning pegs. And then the person would come out after the hour and Festinger would say, Oh, you know, I, I, my research assistant had to go. Can you, can you help me? Can you go talk to the, the next person who's going to come in, who's sitting out in the lobby? And that person was like part of the experiment. It wasn't really a new test subject. But he said... Can you go out there and just you know, give them this clipboard and just help them get enthusiastic about the experiment? J just tell them that it's fun and interesting. And so most you know, people would do it. They, they, they were felt forced to comply and, and to tell a lie because it wasn't fun and interesting. But they were paid. Some of the people were paid $1, and some of the people were paid $20, which this was 1959, so it's like, think like $5 or $100 today. And so they did that, and then later the, everybody was brought back, and they were asked in an interview, how did you feel about the experiment? And the people who were paid $20, most of them said, 
yeah, it was pretty boring. I was just turning pegs in a board. That, that wasn't fun. But a much higher percentage of the people who were only paid one dollar to lie to the next person, they responded to that question of, oh, yeah, the, the, the turning pegs, that was fun and interesting. So, the conclusion that Festinger came up with was that the people who had a big incentive to lie, you know, it was a, a small lie, but it's still a lie, and we're conditioned not to mislead people. We don't feel good about that. If, if, that creates dissonance within us if we're asked to lie. Well, but they were being paid 20, which was like $100, and so they knew why they were lying, and they justified it, and they were able to understand that I'm lying to this person because I just got a bunch of money. However, the people who were only paid $1, they were just put into an awkward position. They had dissonance. The dollar, they didn't really care about a dollar. I mean, they, a dollar is good, but I mean, would you give away your principles for a dollar? Yeah, most people wouldn't. And so they were put into a state of dissonance. And in order to alleviate that discomfort, they convinced themselves that turning pegs in a board was fun and interesting. They identified with that activity. And nobody could talk them out of it. I'm Barry, and this has been my vlog.